Friday morning at 10 a.m., Marco and Marek from the Kite Sleet came to pick me up and we drove to Jevama, a forest and wetland area about 70 k southeast of Tallinn, the capital of Estland. Since September 2012, the Kite Sleet Survival Instruction Group of the Estonian Defence League uh, has been inviting me to come to Estland each year to share my expertise on training methods in the field of survival medicine. And since uh, 2013, um, I've been following the Sierra A instructor course, and this past weekend was the final exam. The aim of this 60 hour exercise was to test the mental and physical resilience of each participant, allowing the candidate instructor to use this as a starting base to teach practical skills to the students. These trainings teach you to absorb adversity and to cope with hardships. A group of 26 military gathered there, 24 Estonians and two Finns, with me closing the ranks as number 27. After everyone had packed their minimal gear, we received a short briefing by our lead instructor Eiki Vaikre. There were seven instructors in total, including a female combat medic, who would monitor the participants' health. The formation of five teams was done by drawing lots. Equipment was minimal, a uniform or boost clothes, boots, two pairs of wool socks, a wool hat, gloves, poncho, first aid and survival kit, knife and a whetstone, backpack or chest rig, pencil and paper. So my team included Christian, Tavo, Johan and Vladimir. Our team was the last to depart. In total there were five teams of about five persons each, with one team departing every 30 minutes. And uh, there was no specific scenario to adhere to, except we had to hike fast to reach the various checkpoints in time. We are collecting and eating edibles along the way. Each team received a 1935 survey map making it quite challenging to determine our precise location on the map. At each checkpoint we received coordinates for the next checkpoint, sometimes within an hour or three, and roads were to be avoided, as we could be noticed there. Our journey led mostly through quite impenetrable forests and swamps teeming with ticks, mosquitoes and horseflies. And uh, at each checkpoint we had to do a number of assignments, such as searching for edible medicinal plants. The forest is getting more dense, there are ditches to cross on even swampy terrain. So, finding of Chaga mushroom, the Nonutus obliquus. It's a parasite on birch tree and it's a healthy remedy against cancer, diabetes, calms the nervous system and it positively affects various stomach diseases and ulcers. And it also stimulates the immune system. For free uh, in Estland, in the forest. So, uh, what is it all good for, uh, Christian? Pardon? Yes, it gives you energy. Energy. It relieves stress. Relieves stress. Uh, it contains a massive amount of B vitamins. B vitamins, all, yeah. All of the yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, My fellow companions know the terrain well. Their roots lie in these Estonian swamps and forests. Especially Christian, an Afghanistan veteran and survival instructor who lives in the forest around Pernu, is familiar with life in the wild like no other.
and eggs can be eaten. One of the assignments was the making of a fire bow. Here we needed the material available in nature. Don't spoil the food. All the clothes. We're crossing a small stream, staying dry, keeping balance. another way to go with a cup in your mouth with the end axe in it good work good, 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 good. so the fire composition uh, Start is fire bow with drill. Fire. Friday morning, ten June. After a night outdoors without sleeping bag. Good morning. Fatigue struck as we were making our way through the underbrush and the boggy ground. Especially when we weren't sure of where we were. Fearing of course and having to cover many extra kilometers. The few energy bars and bits of candy we had were shared equally in our team. As we were all familiar with the dynamics that accompanied adversity and had experienced it before. 
cooperation remained unified and optimal. We soon found that the lack of water was affecting us. We were not able to refill our canteens and the first two days it was dry and about 14 degrees as we made our way through the overgrown forest. Thirst is much more confrontational than hunger. Dried lips, a dry and raspy throat, a slight headache and fatigue, the lack of sleep and reduced alertness all started to affect us. After a long hike, we arrived at Colossara Bok Island and had access to fresh water from the well. Day two. It started raining and it continued for many hours. Looking for a place to cross the river, it became clear the further we hiked, the worse it got. The stream got bigger and deeper, so we returned to find a better crossing point. During the day, the rain got even heavier. Late at night, although it was hard to tell what time it really was, as the sun didn't go down until almost midnight, we made camp. It was the second night in a damp forest. 
my bed on the ground, a thick layer of pine branches covered by a silver rescue blanket. Using a line, I draped my poncho across like a tent to protect myself from the rain. I curled up and fell asleep until being awoken at 5.30 by calls telling us to get ready to depart. The third day started in the pouring rain. We had to do a solo crossing of a swamp. And as four teams had already crossed, there was no way to cross while remaining dry. Once sucked into it, you may not survive. I'm collecting white moss for water purification purpose. One needs at least a plastic bottle, charcoal, cloth, and mix it all together. Not until the third day, when it started pouring rain, were we able to drink the crudely filtered swamp water. I added a few drops of Hadex, just to be sure that I wouldn't get any parasites. My fellow travelers didn't make use of this. We weren't able to dry off all day until the campfire that night. That evening we also worked on crafting a knife from white hot steel using a hammer and a round stone.
In the meantime, Christian killed and skinned the goat that was then divided amongst the men and the staff. The next morning we hiked back to the starting point and we were awarded in a ceremony in which Erki Vaikre and his team handed us a badge. The official awarding of the Sierra A Instructors Authority of the Kitesleet will take place in October 2016.